Hello. Let's take a look at a basic discovery of an element in eHealth. So the first thing you need to do is get an eHealth server, and then you need to make sure that the target you want to discover is available and can be contacted. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to ping the target, and we see that we can talk to it. And so the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to get its IP address. Okay, so now we have a target and we have an IP address for that target and we know that we can talk to it through ping. Um, next we're going to go to the eHealth one click and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at our elements and we see that we actually have no elements. This is a lab box and so by doing a search for asterisk um, anything that's in here would be shown and we see that we have nothing. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into element configuration or resource discovery and policies. Now, in order to discover something, you have to build a policy. The policy tells it what technologies to use, what community strings, what ports, um, and a bunch of other configurable options for what can be discovered and, and how. So, um, again, the first thing we need to do is create a new policy because there isn't one here. And we'll just call this one server because the target we're going to discover is a server. Now, these are the technologies, and the different kind of technologies you choose determines what we look for during the discovery process. Um, since we are going to discover just a regular Windows system, we'll choose the system technology. Um, and then finally, at the end of this, at the bottom of this GUI, um, is where you put your community strings. So we've chosen our technology, we've given it a name, and there really isn't much else in here that we really want to set, so we're going to say OK, and we'll save that. And now we have a new policy which we can use to do our discover. Okay, And the, the policy name is server. The technology that's involved in this particular policy is just system. You could use a variety um, depending on what you were trying to discover. The next thing we're going to do is we go to the Discover tab. And um, here there are a couple of options. We can do an IP address range. Um, we can do an IP address list from a file. And if you browse to that file and the file includes the IP address, um, the string, and the port, you can use that as a seed file if you would so that you wouldn't have to type everything here. You could type it all at your desk or import it from a spreadsheet or what have you. And that way you could cover a large range of them um, all at once. Um, you can use the strings in the file, or you can use the strings that are set by default in the um, community, I mean, in the policy. Or, in this case, you could do an IP address list, which is what we're going to do. And we're going to use the address that we pulled out of that um, ping window, and we'll add it. So now we have a target, um, and we have to choose a policy, and there is only one policy available. So we'll go ahead and we'll choose server. And then here is where you would put your community strings. And um, by default, I did use public. Um, if you were going to put multiple strings in here, you would comma separate them, and the discovery will try them in the order that they're listed uh, until it hits a match or fails to successfully talk to the target. So now here we've entered our IP address, we've chosen our policy, we've given it the community string, and there really isn't much else to it. We go in here and we click Discover. Now by default, we will ping the target first. And there is actually an environment variable that allows you to shut that off if you wanted to, but in most cases you don't. So we ping it, and if it answers, we'll try querying um, the SNMP using the community string that was listed in the policy, and using the ports that are listed um, also in the policy, and there are equivalent environment variables for the ports, which can be used to override the policies. So here we saw that we found the target. It answered when we pinged it. Um, we were able to get 30 elements when we did our SNMP query. And if we go into the results, we see an opportunity to decide what we want to add to the database. In this case, we'll add everything. And then if we go into the log and we'll see exactly what went on, it pinged it, it SNMP queried it, um, it classified it, what have you. So now that we've got 30 elements, um, we're going to come over here and we're going to save the results. And you'll see that it's doing a merge in the top right corner. So what that's doing is it's taking the information that's in this discover log and it's putting it into the database and creating permanent elements. Um, and we see here in the top left, the discovery results are saved and this is now finished. We'll close the discovery. We'll come back over here to our managed resources tab, look at elements.
and again the default filter of asterisk um, is there and what we end up with is we now have 30 lovely new elements all with the system name of Area 01 which was the name of the machine I discovered and we see all the different components that were exposed by the MIB so we've got an 8 core CPU we've got the server itself um, we've got disks and Ethernet ports and what have you um, symbolic links and what have you so that's basically the gist of a discovery and I hope that was helpful thank you